Well, Merry Christmas, everyone, from our family to yours. Wherever you're celebrating today, we hope it's a day full of festive joy and excess. I think we've earned just a little bit of that after this year. Well, there's been a lot of patience already being exercised by the Grant family today, and so we're looking forward to opening some presents and trading these shoes for jandals pretty soon. But first of all, we want to remember the Christmas story with you this morning. And over the last month of Advent, we've been lighting candles in preparation for today. And they are the candles of hope, peace, joy, and love. And today on Christmas Day, we light the Christ candle, which symbolizes all of our hopes in our Savior Jesus, who has come at Christmas and will come again in an age without end. Or well, Esther's gonna light uh, our final Advent candle, which is the Christ candle. At St. Paul's, we have a long tradition of Christmas movies, and we're gonna enjoy one of our all-time favorites now. And you might recognize some of the characters, although you wouldn't recognize them now, actually, because some of them are taller than this tree right here. But this is one of our favorites from years gone by. Mary was really scared when the angel came to her. There was one main angel called Gabriel. He was just a boy angel. She had wings and she was all white. The angel said, you're going to have a special baby. And it was God's son. She was quite excited. A bit scared. And she was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have the son of God. And then she was like, I can't, I'm not married and stuff. Joseph, he was a builder. Mary told Joseph that she was having a baby called Jesus and it was God's son. He was like, what? Then Joseph saw the angel in a dream. I think Joseph was really scared. And then they went to Bethlehem. On a donkey. It would be quite hot. She had a baby in her tummy and she would have been really heavy. <laughs> she said, Can we stop anywhere with these houses? They had to try and find somewhere for Mary to have the baby. They went around a whole neighbourhood. No, there's no space. Everyone said no in an angry voice because it was the middle of the night. The last innkeeper, he said, yeah, there's a barn type thing around the back. They had to go to a barn and have their baby. It had sheep. It was like all hay and animal poop and sheep and things. Mary put baby Jesus in one of those troughs. They call the baby Jesus and they loved him. And he has two daddies, God and Jesus. They both needed to look after the baby. The angel told the shepherds to follow the star. There was three kings. They followed the star all the way to where Jesus was born. When they get to the stable, they go them to eat the presents. and then they got some angels as visitors too. And then there was a giant star. Everyone was there. Then there was a party.
Savior Christ the Lord Go tell it on the mountain Over the hills and everywhere That we can be forgiven The weight of all our sin He came to bear Emmanuel, God with Emmanuel, King Jesus, the Savior of the world is born. Emmanuel, God with us. Emmanuel, King Jesus, the Savior of the world is born. Go tell it on the mountain. Humbly in the manger. Mercy sent from heaven Angels fill the sky with highest praise Tell it on the mountain 
this baby born of virgin birth the ruler of all nations the glory of our god has come to earth emmanuel god with us emmanuel king jesus the savior of the Well, I hope you've reached the day with your sanity intact and ready for some summer rest and adventure, hopefully well beyond the city borders after such a long time of these limited movements. Well, today we're celebrating this amazing story, which is actually what makes us all part of God's family, the church. And in his letter to the Colossians, the Apostle Paul starts by telling the Christmas story and a little bit of Easter in five amazing sentences. And every time I hear this, I'm amazed by the story that Paul tells. This is how he puts it. He says, The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Well, I'm not sure how you've landed this year after all the unique challenges we've faced. And even in a normal year, I find it's always a bit tinged with frustration at this stage as we experience the limitations of human life. As we race around trying to finish the year well, we tend to leave a trail of unmet demands and loose ends untied, flagging energy and creativity with not quite enough hours in the day to get it all done. And I love the way Bono from U2 describes the frustration. In fact, he calls it a rage that he experiences knowing that he can't write a song without the rest of the band, that his fullness as an artist only lies in them. This limitation is the challenge of being human, and it's also the hope of being Christian. In fact, it's the power and the promise of Christmas. Because today is when we remember that Jesus, the infinite God, the creator of everything, chose to embrace the intimate constraints of human life. You know, I used to think that Jesus' temptation in the wilderness must have been easier for him because of who he was and what he knew. But I think it was actually made harder by that because his ancient enemy was offering him what he'd already known, an opportunity to step out of the frustrating limitations of human life and to take back the power of the infinite. The Christmas story, God taking on human flesh, radically transforms our lives by redeeming our human limitations because they've now been shared by God, they've been affirmed by God, and they've been healed by God. And I think this allows us to make peace with the constraints that we face, and actually to be present to the here and now of our lives, even to our extended families over Christmas lunch, rather than focusing on what we don't yet have or we haven't yet done. But Jesus didn't just come to identify with us. The real hope of the Christmas story is that Jesus came to change the very possibilities of human life, to breathe the power of the infinite into the intimate. And I think Mary in the Christmas story is the character who really grasps this message the most when she finds herself unexpectedly and inconveniently pregnant. The scandalous divine plan completely disrupts her life and constrains her future. Her fiance would probably let her go and who would believe the cover story about who the real father was. But you know, Mary is our model of faith because instead of despising the limitations of her situation, she focuses on the power and the promise of the infinite God who has called her 
for this very purpose. And she starts her famous prayer, which we know as the Magnificat, with these incredible words. She says, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. And today, this is our hope too. When we invite the infinite God to breathe his life into the intimate details of our lives, it changes the possibilities for life. So as we approach Christmas now, it's an invitation to make peace with the constraints of life in this year of all years, and to be present to what God has given us. Christmas, of course, is a time where we also fill our imaginations with Jesus himself, who Paul describes as the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. He is the one who has placed eternity in our hearts and has breathed his new creation life into every part of our lives. And so on this Christmas day, may the God of life reveal his love to you in new ways. May he bless you and all those you love now and forever. I pray that you have a great Christmas today and that you're filled to overflowing with the hope, peace, joy, and love that can only come from our Savior Jesus. Have a great summer break too. I pray that God gives you the rest you need and we'll see you in the new year. Go well. We'll see you again soon, church. God bless you heaps. And wonders of his love And wonders of his love